Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode, and this is going to be a continuation of the aromaticity lectures. So when we took a look at this last time, we discussed aromaticity in reference to three major, basically, rules or constraints to determine whether something is aromatic or not. And that was, number one, the compound needed to be cyclic. Number two, the compound needed to be completely flat and conjugated at all points around the cyclic ring. So that means that every single point that I find, I shouldn't find any sp3 hybridized carbons or any other atom for that matter, nitrogens, oxygens, etc. And then finally, the last rule was we had to pass Huckel's rule. And Huckel's rule stated that aromatic compounds would have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, where n needed to equal a whole integer, so it would be 0, 1, 2, etc. And so what this led to was that anything that was aromatic, if it met the first two rules, meaning it was completely flat and planar with conjugation and it was cyclic, that any cyclic compound that had 2 pi electrons or 6 pi electrons or 10 pi electrons, and you can keep adding to this list here by four, okay, so 14 pi electrons would be considered aromatic. And then anything that would have, for instance, four pi electrons, eight pi electrons, 12 pi electrons, so on and so forth, would be considered anti-aromatic, all right? And we discussed that if you violated the first two rules, uh, meaning either the compound was not cyclic or the compound was not completely flat and conjugated, the compound would be non-aromatic. And if the compound met the first two rules and then violated the third rule, violated Huckel's rule and had one of these sets of pi electrons, then it was considered anti-aromatic. And the general ranking was aromatic compounds were highly stable, very, very stable. And then non-aromatic compounds were kind of indifferent, so they were in between. They weren't as stable as aromatic compounds, but then the anti-aromatic compounds are sort of the complete opposite of aromatic, and they were very unstable. In fact, sometimes anti-aromatic compounds will try to break apart in order to go into a non-aromatic state if they can. So the goal of this lecture here, okay, so you should go back and check out that other lecture if you haven't seen it. But the goal of this lecture is to determine whether the compounds shown here are aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So I have three examples at the top here, and I have another three right here. So your goal is to determine whether these are aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So with most of the practice videos, what I suggest is that you pause and you attempt to solve these problems for yourself before we go through the walkthrough. So see if you can keep up with this and you can understand why we're classifying each individual compound as what we are. All right. So for instance, the first example here, if I take a look, this is cyclic. So I pass the first rule. However, when I get to rule number two, is this conjugated and planar? No, because when I take a look at this, this carbon up here is sp3 hybridized. And so when I get ready to examine rule two, I would fail as far as the rules for aromaticity at this point, and I would classify this first compound as being non-aromatic. And again, that is because I failed the second rule here where I am no longer conjugated at every single point in the system or planar. This tetrahedral center is going to screw that up. Now, if that were a carbocation there and there was a p orbital, then at that point I could move on and I could start examining Huckel's rule. And this brings up another important point. You do not need to assess Huckel's rule if you have either failed the cyclic test or you have failed the planar slash non-conjugated test. Because if either of those fail, it's automatically non-aromatic. You don't even concern yourself with the number of pi electrons in the system. All right, so number two, if I take a look at this next compound here, this is cyclic, all right? And then after that, I take a look at it and I say, it is conjugated at every point because the two double bonds here create p orbitals at every single point. And so this is sp2 hybridized throughout. 
and therefore I would pass the flat and conjugated test. So I'm okay there. So now the question is, do I pass Huckel's rule? Because if I don't, it'll be anti-aromatic. If I do, it'll be an aromatic compound. So when I start looking at this, I say, how many pi electrons are here? Well, I only have the two double bonds. And so what I would do is I would set it up and say 4n plus 2 is equal to 4, because there's four pi electrons here. So I subtract 2 from each side, and then 4n is going to equal 2. So that means n would equal 2 divided by 4, which would be 1 half when I reduce it. 1 half is not a whole integer, and so this compound would be anti-aromatic in nature. Okay, very unstable, and especially this one because you've got the four-membered ring. That's going to add angle strain on top of the fact that it's anti-aromatic in its uh, pi electron nature. All right, so let's take a look at this next one here. This would be a cyclic compound, so that passes. And then is this flat and conjugated at all points? So the question you have to ask yourself here is this oxygen, is it sp2 hybridized or not? And I have a lecture that goes into when lone pairs are found in p orbitals versus hybrid orbitals. So in other words, when is a hetero atom like this, an oxygen, a nitrogen, etc., when is it considered sp2? And when is it considered sp3? So if you are unaware of that or you don't understand that, I will leave a link in the description. I want you to go check out that video so that you get an understanding of when lone pairs participate in p orbitals versus when they are simply in hybrid orbitals. So it turns out that any time that you have a lone pair that is one space away from a set of pi electrons in a double bond or a triple bond, it will be in a p orbital and that is because it's going to participate in conjugation and resonance so one of these two sets of electrons will participate in the aromatic system that we're trying to set up here so one of these can be considered the p orbital the other pair because this would be sp2 hybridized is going to be in a hybrid orbital all right now it doesn't really matter which of the two sets of uh, lone pairs you pick out and say oh this one's going to be you know considered the p orbital set and this one would be in the hybrid set it doesn't really matter at that point what matters here is that we are passing the flat and conjugated test so then we move on and we say do i pass the aromatic test this set right here the one that i said is going to be related to the p orbital is going to be considered in resonance with the pi electrons that are already there in the double bonds. And so therefore, if I add those two electrons up, I've got a total of six because I have two from one of the double bonds, another two from the other double bond, and then the final two will come from the lone pair that would be participating in resonance, right? Because I can move this around the ring. I could turn around and say, this is gonna form a double bond, and then this double bond will deposit a set of pi electrons as a lone pair right on that carbon at the bottom left hand corner so because of that when i solve huckel's rule i would say i've got 4n plus 2 equals 6 and in this case i subtract 2 i get 4n equals 4 and so n equals 1 this would be an aromatic system and that makes sense. Think of benzene, right? Benzene is the most well-known aromatic compound, and it is cyclic, planar, and conjugated, and it has three double bonds, therefore giving rise to six pi electrons that create an aromatic system. So this would be similar. This would be an aromatic compound. All right, so moving along here, if I take a look at this next compound, all right, is it cyclic? Yes, so I pass the cyclic test. Is it flat and conjugated? The answer here is yes. And this nitrogen is involved in a double bond, so I don't even need to worry about its lone pair because the lone pair would be in a hybrid orbital since the nitrogen is already involved in a double bond. The, the question of whether or not a lone pair participates is going to apply when it's directly next to a double bond, not when the hetero atom is actually involved with a double bond currently. So this will be flat and conjugated. And then if I take a look here, this 
lone pair, again, is in a hybrid orbital because the nitrogen is already participating in a pi bond. So there's no need for that lone pair to additionally contribute or participate in resonance here, and it would not. So if I take a look, just like benzene, I've got a total of three pi bonds here, and that would give rise to six pi electrons. So just like we saw in the previous case, six pi electrons leads to n equals one. And so this would pass Huckel's rule n would equal 1, and this would be an aromatic compound. And it turns out this compound is a fairly well-known aromatic compound known as pyridine. Pyridine is often used as a base in many reactions, but it is a very, very stable compound due to its aromaticity. So let's take a look at this next atom here, or not atom, molecule, but the atoms in it will be important. So when I take a look at this, the sulfur and the oxygen are both one space away from a pi bond. And so that means that each of these will have one set of lone pairs that can contribute to the pi system. So that would be in a p orbital, this would be in a p orbital, and then the ones that I haven't labeled there would be in the hybrid orbitals. So is it cyclic? Yes, this is definitely a cyclic compound. Is it flat and conjugated? Yes, it would be flat and it is conjugated at all spots because the heteroatoms both have lone pairs that can contribute in p orbitals. So I shouldn't have any issue with conjugation there. All right, now the last question is how many pi electrons do I have for Huckel's rule here? So 4n plus 2 equals, now I have to determine here, I've got a double bond, so that's 2 pi electrons, another double bond, that's 4, and then the lone pairs here, that's going to be 6 and 8, because those are in p orbitals, which means they are in conjugation and resonance with the other pi bonds. So 8 pi electrons here. I take this and I subtract 2, so I get 4n equals 6. And that means that n is going to equal 4 over 6 or 2 thirds. 2 thirds would not be a whole integer number. And so I would classify this compound as an anti-aromatic compound. All right. And then for the final example here. All right. Is this cyclic? Most definitely this is a cyclic compound. Is this flat and conjugated at all points? All right, so yes to this, yes to this, because it's involved in a pi bond. This nitrogen is involved in a pi bond. This carbon is involved in a pi bond. This nitrogen is not involved in a pi bond, but it has a lone pair that is one carbon away or one space away from a pi bond. And so this would be considered to be in a p orbital. So this would be sp2 hybridized at this nitrogen. This nitrogen would be sp2. So I can safely say that this would be flat and that it would be conjugated throughout the ring. So now I'm just down to Huckel's rule. I take a look here. I've got a double bond, so that's two. Another double bond, that's four. All right, now what about the lone pair pairs here? This lone pair is in a p orbital, so this would count as a set of pi electrons right here. So that's going to be 6. And now what about this nitrogen? Well, this nitrogen is already involved in a double bond. So that set of lone pair is going to be in a hybrid orbital. And therefore, if it's not in a p orbital, it would not be participating in the pi system. So I can assume that this lone pair will stay out of the ring. And therefore, I only have six pi electrons in this system. And again, we've seen many examples with six. 4n plus 2 equals 6 is going to come out to n equals 1. And so this would be an aromatic system. All right. So if you have not checked out the video on the three rules for aromaticity, you probably would be lost during this video. So go back and check that out if you're confused so you can understand what Huckel's rule is, how we determine conjugation. And if you're getting confused on any examples where we're looking at lone pairs on nitrogens, oxygen, sulfurs, etc., and you don't know whether they would actually be pi electrons or stay out of the pi system, check out in the description the link that goes to a video discussing when to determine if lone pairs would be sp2 hybridized or sp3 hybridized and that should lead you to an understanding of what we talked about in this video so thank you so much for learning with us as always watching videos on this channel helps to support 
Uh, you can check out our courses. We do have, it's not on aromaticity itself, but we do have a lecture course on Udemy that involves aromatic reactions. So if you want to support the channel, looking at those courses and watching additional YouTube videos always helps to support us. If you comment, I'll be happy to get back to you. And other than that, have a fantastic rest of the day, and I will see you guys for additional lectures. Take care.